I got it. Here we go. We're not gonna need that. This is to protect you, okay? Not me. Bring your ass on the mat. All right. I love a demanding woman. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Some say women are having a moment these days. What? But women have been rising up and taking charge for far longer than that. Yeah, Laura! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about! We're just now finally waking up and taking notice. Don't freeze. I never freeze. In 2018, blockbuster hit Black Panther earned more than a billion dollars at the box office, making it one of the highest grossing movies of all time. You are not fit to be a king. Much of that success is attributed to the diversity of the film's cast, which extends well beyond color. But the women in this superhero flick are hardly damsels in distress. In fact, they're quite the opposite. Can we just leave him? He'll catch up. I was one of the Dora Milaje, okay. so one of the main ones, and we were the all-female fighters. We protected the Black Panther and basically our country, Wakanda. We yeah. was the bosses, oh, yes. Yeah. We were the real deal. And then when I wasn't in my Dora costume, I was the Okoye stunt double, and Okoye was the general of the Dora Milaje. How long have you been a stunt woman for? I've been a stunt woman since 2010. What are some of your other credits? Us, which is the Jordan Peele psychological thriller. But I'm currently the lead stunt woman on Fox's hit drama 911. Okay, so I am in yeah. the presence of, of royalty here. So the bow staff was what we trained with for our preparation for our roles as a Dora Milaje and helped us transition very smoothly on film when we actually had our spears. Just remember, this is the top, top. right? Yep. So you bring the top down on opposite side yep. uh -huh. and then all around. Mm -hmm. So here, hold on. Flip it. Here. Yes, yes, yes. Because let's think about it. If we were in a fight, yeah. you're trying to get this to your other hand. Okay. So you're trying to get it there. Would you call the stunt industry a male-dominated industry? Definitely. In our industry, we have these roles that are called ND, which means nondescript. Okay. That means anyone can play that part. Got it. A lot of those ND parts are given to males, mainly Caucasians. They're, so you're saying I would thrive in this industry? <laughs> you would thrive. And for the few stunt women who do land those roles, the blows they take tend to be a lot harder. Women, we don't always get to be covered up. Mm -hmm. You know, we have yeah. booty shorts on, yeah. and little bras and tank tops. I mean, I've done a stunt in a negligee. Really? No padding? No padding. Just straight up? Straight up. Wow. We the real deal. That is the real we deal. We badass. Smash hits like Wonder Woman and Atomic Blonde are certainly helping to create more opportunities for female stunt performers, but what Hollywood still lacks is an equal representation behind the scenes. What I will tell you is that there's not a lot of female stunt coordinators. They're the ones who are responsible for fighting the stunt performers or the doubles. Okay. You know, I've been doing stunts for eight years and I've only worked for three. So we have a fight sequence for you. Okay. You will be playing Eric's part. And did you choreograph this fight scene? I did. And what's the storyline? I'm a badass woman, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of women who are walking around the street minding their own business might get taunted or bothered by a delinquent. So I'm showing women that can be strong, they're not defenseless. Crotch shots are always good. Crotch shots. I've always Crotch said, shots. if you want to bring a guy to his knees, there's two ways. You either force him to commit or you <laughs> hit him in the crotch. I'm a lover, not a fighter. You're gonna get your ass whooped. I see that, this face right here. It's too pretty to get punched in. You don't wanna be too close, right? Oh, no, nope. right? I guess Can't not. Can't hit actors, right? So nope. we're gonna work on spacing so you don't do that to me. Okay, if there's ever any sort of a physical altercation, I would prefer to hire a stunt double. Or Janisha. Throw yeah. a right cross. Oh. And I hook oh. you. Perfect. Yes, and I'm gonna do this because I'm guiding you. Oh. Bam, oh. and ah. Uh, I like the bow staff stuff a lot better. I could totally take Johnny in a real street fight. Hands down, no hesitation, not one doubt in my mind. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'll tell you what, Janisha is, I mean, she's the real deal. When it comes to martial arts, when it comes to stunts, when it comes to being a badass, uh, women are right there neck and neck with men. Weather don't keep us down. Stunt people, rain, shine, or thunder, snow, yes. sleet. We got it. We go to work. That's how we do it. In magic, women are often confined in a box or destined for dangers. Today, we're flipping that script and adding a twist. Ta-da! Yeah! Well, last thing I remember, I was at a bachelor party in Vegas, and then somehow I ended up in this box. Where am I now? You are in our rehearsal space. So we just did magic. We just did magic. And you're a magician. I am. What would you say your favorite trick to perform is? It's anything that puts a handsome man in danger. Misty Lee has been practicing magic for 20 years, becoming the first ever female staff medium to perform the famed Houdini seance at Hollywood's mecca of illusion, the Magic Castle. At the turn of the century, there were a ton of female magicians when they were on vaudeville, and there were some really, really good ones. And then history just kind of forgot that they existed, and it became more of a male-dominated industry, and now I think we're transitioning out of that. This one is called Card to Ashes. What? Magic has been around for an awful long time. I'm sure you heard of a very famous water to wine trick. Jesus. I exactly. <laughs> can you do that? I, I can, and I can teach you how to do that. Not Probably not the same methodology that he used. I can already walk on water. Yes, I'm sure your mother thinks you yeah. do. Yeah. And now, Misty performs the impossible by making my ego disappear as she reveals the dreaded twist to this magical tale. You're performing at the Magic Castle tonight. We got a lot of work to do. I'm performing magic. At the world's mecca of magic. Yeah. In front of people. In front of people judging you. We gotta get you up to speed. Let's do this. I'm a little bit terrified, to be quite honest. So at this point, what I'm trying to do is stay on her good side because the last thing I need is her pulling a rabbit out of my ass. And you throw it up. <laughs> no. Shake it, shake it, shake it. You open yours just like this and you see if you've made a shape. Okay. I made a bird! You really did. Now who's the magician? That is magic. There's a tremendous amount of pressure on me right now. The magic tricks that I'm used to doing is meeting girls, taking them on dates, and then disappearing for the rest of their lives. All right. It's showtime. Who's ready to see some magic? Yeah. Who here likes cards? Well, you're in luck. Jessica Rabbit, you want to help me out here real quick? I want you to pull a card out from the middle of this deck here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these ashes. Did you show everyone your card? I won't look, I promise. OK, here we go. Sprinkle them on my arm with a little rub. So far, I'm killing it. And for the main act, so I like to do magic that's a little bit dangerous. If you're a praying man, now would be a great time to start. Time up. One, two, three. Ah! You know 
what? I'm, I might quit my day job. I wouldn't advise that. Good morning, ladies. I'm here to meet uh, a couple of butchers. Oh, well, uh, that would be us. You two are the butchers? No, we just wear these for decoration. Okay. Take a stroll through Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and it's easy to see this hood is pretty progressive. And where we're headed is certainly no exception. When I think butcher, I think of, you know, a really manly, burly dude, big beard, butcher knife, just whacking meat. You ready to work? The delivery's already here. You're I'm ready, ready to get to work, yeah. All right, put your jacket down. We don't want you to mess up your pretty little leather. Sonny Sanchez. I went to school for pastry. I also used to work at a cheese shop, mm -hmm. and I just happened to fall in love with butchery. It's all very fascinating. And Leah Wolf have been butchering at the Meat Hook for a combined seven years. Let's go, let's Pick go. Me. Ah, you have a bad day. You got this. Ah. <laughs> Should we carry any of it? Nah, I'm not going to. I think he's got it under control. Sweet. Huh. When I'm teaching people, I can definitely tell the difference between like men and women yeah. as they're learning because a lot of times men will come in and they're like, I got this, it's like in my DNA. And women are like yeah. not afraid to be like, I don't know what I'm doing with this. Yeah. Like, I just want to learn and be good at it. Yeah. Make no mistake, there are male butchers here too, but around these parts, there really is no distinction. Well, that one gave me a weird look, man. <laughs> All right, right on top of this guy? It's right on top, before you give yourself a hernia. <laughs> Get your ass up there! <laughs> this is one of the more uh, humbling, intimidating experiences I've seen. You guys have just dismembered 15 pigs in the course of five minutes. You sweating yet? Sweating? I'm bleeding. <laughs> So what are we doing first here? We need to drag these beef legs over, so if you can reach. I got it! Wow, you're committed, I'll give you that much. This is roast beef? Yep. Okay. This is the hind leg, so this is our hind shank here. We're gonna be taking this bone off. This, this is called is the H bone. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have to stay super nice and tight to this bone so that we're not stabbing into any of our good roast beef over here. We're gonna be making some sausage today, our classic fennel and garlic sausage. It's a 70% lean to 30% ratio of pork. I'm 80% lean. Well, no comment. So this is like the normal grip. When you feel like you need more control, instead flip it to the psycho grip. Psycho grip? Yeah, mm hmm All right. Woo! Now we're cooking with gas. Oh, sh <laughs> A lot of precision in this, huh? Yeah, it's not just hacking it up like most people think. So a lot of the meat that you guys have, it seems like it's like sustainably raised meat, grass-fed, antibiotic, hormone-free. We just want to do right by every part of the food system, from the animal to the farmer, to the slaughterhouse, to the driver, to the employees at the meat hook, and eventually the customers. Nose to tail. Nose to tail. Oh my god, this one's squishy. Not only does it take, I think, a certain intestinal fortitude to work here, but in addition to that, I mean, this is this is hard work. This is heavy. Yeah, it's physical labor, for sure. So when you tell someone what you do for a living, how do they usually react when you tell them that you're a butcher? Their first reaction is usually like, just disbelief. Oh, a butcher? Like a real butcher? They're like, like what happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> Men uh, in particular have looked over my head before to see if there's anyone else behind me that could better, you know, help them. You are breaking stereotypes. Yeah, like defying expectations is definitely a very cool part of it. It's super empowering. Ah! Oh, all right, so that's right. It totally happens to the best of us. So now you can just do one last cut. So I'm gonna show you how to break down this chicken, and I need you to pay really close attention because I'm only gonna show you one time. Now when it comes to sausage, do we want it like long and skinny or short and fat? What do you prefer? Spread our wings, open our thighs. This is like chicken yoga, you know? It really, yeah. I mean, those are some good looking sausages, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're fine. I wanna slice down, and we're gonna follow our rib cage all the way around. There's the wishbone. There is the wishbone. You're right. Very good. Do you feel like there's more pressure on you to, to prove yourself in, in more of like a male-dominated industry? It's an absolute pissing contest. There's a lot of competition that happens, but it's not really like a, you know, a gender thing. At the meat hook, you don't see gender. You just see butchers. Pretty much. And clearly, I am not one of those butchers. Good lord. 
almost there. You're doing great, you're doing great, you're doing great. You're I'm doing... lost, I'm lost in the breasts. <laughs> What do you want to do with the two best sausages you've ever seen stuffed in your... You we these, should hang these on the wall. You mean these unevenly sized, loose, slumpy sausages? It's not the size of the sausage, it's the motion of the stuffing. <laughs> we need the apron back, though, before you go. Those aren't free. In the U.S., the sport of auto racing is pretty popular. Oh my God! Seeing a woman behind the wheel, however, not so much. Yeah! <laughs> Obviously, Danica Patrick, right, is, is probably the most well-known woman in car racing, right? Yeah. Was she at all an inspiration for you? You know, I think that Danica was a huge maverick for other women in the sport. That being said, I have almost every single interviewer and ask me if I'm going to be the next Danica Patrick. So usually my response is, you know, nothing against Danica Patrick, but I don't want to be the next Danica Patrick. I want to be, be the you. first Aurora Strauss. Yeah. Absolutely. At just 19 years old, Aurora made history as the only professional teenage female sports car racer in North America. At 19, I was making history in other ways. I snuck into more bars than any other 19-year-old with a fake ID. I, I respect it. Right? Now at age 20, when Aurora's not busy making tracks around the country, she's making grades as a Harvard undergrad. Tell me a little bit about where we are. This place is absolutely magnificent. Yep, so right now we're at Monticello Motor Club. Oh. All of the cars that you see around us are cars owned by members or part of our street fleet, which are race cars purpose-built that you can rent to take out on our four-mile track. And since the club's CEO happens to be her dad, this is basically Aurora's playground. This is pretty badass. So at 13, all your friends from school are still probably playing with Barbie dolls and stuff. You're out here in race cars. That's right. Actually, I think my first time in a stick shift car on track was like right here. And now, I mean, you've gone pro, obviously. So how often do you compete? Oh, gosh, I probably have at least 10 official race weekends a year. Uh -huh. But then you're testing or prepping the car at least 10 other weekends. Now, are these normal conditions for racing? This? Oh my god, not even a little bit. It's gonna be an experience for both of us. I mean, it already is. We're cruising. We are cruising! Whoa! Oh. This is where it gets sketchy. Woo! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, Laura! That's what I'm talking about. I mean, what's it like being you in this profession? I would say the toughest thing about being a woman in motorsports aren't actually the male competitors because once I get behind the wheel, they want to pass me just as much as they want to pass anyone else. Yep. Woo! <laughs> Biggest differences come with team owners, uh, manufacturers, like a drivers, things like, like a that. Stigma. Exactly. Like a stigma. Yeah. There's definitely a stigma, but with race cars, every car will have its different strengths and weaknesses. And in you know the BMW that I have it actually makes more of a difference to be lighter and to have core strength and endurance. So there are certain types of racing where being a woman can actually have its advantages. This is the first time I've actually used the old <laughs> handles for what they're actually used for. <laughs> How much does one of these bad boys run? One of these cars goes for about 130,000. This car's quick, has about 600 horsepower. So nothing to mess around with, particularly in icy conditions such as this. So we'll see what happens. You ever wrecked one of these? So I haven't wrecked an M5. Unfortunately, wrecking is a part of racing. There's always a first time. Started. Nice. <laughs> so before we get moving, yep. adjust your seat so you're comfortable. So okay. Cool. But I mean, how, I mean, do I want how, how close to the? Uh... So put your arms over the wheel. You want your wrist to be comfortably hanging down. There you go. Does that feel comfortable? Yeah. All right. <sighs> you ready to be in the driver's seat? I think so. All right, here we go. You're neutral. Back, right, yep, there yeah. we go. This is a rocket ship. Wow. You can literally feel the power in this thing. Touch the gas and you are off. Yeah. Woo if I could change anything about the sport, it would be the misconception that there's only so much room for women at the top. Woo! -hoo -hoo! 
That's pretty good counter steer. You like that? I'm impressed. Hey! You know, my goal in racing isn't to be the only woman out there. My goal is for it to be an equal sport. And if I'm not a very novel race car driver by 2030, because you know it's 30% women, so be it. That's better off for the racing world. Drift! Drift! Like that? Exactly like that. <laughs> Absolutely, I consider myself a lady boss. Why is that? Um, I decide what I'm gonna do and then I crush it. That was awesome. Give it up. All right. Give it up. Here, head helmet butt. Woohoo! <laughs> We're still alive. Yeah, we are. Next time someone asks me what I wanna be when I grow up, I'm gonna say I wanna be the next Aurora Strauss. Okay, sounds good. High praise.